2023 Chesapeake Cycling Club C3 Tri-County Classic. Today we're going to be talking about the 102-mile course. Uh, scrolling down here, well, a little too fast. Scrolling down here, a couple of key pieces of info for you. Check-in time for the 100-miler starts at 7 a.m. Once you check in, you will be able to rock and roll after that. Rest stops for the 100-miler are going to be at approximately mile 21, 41, 51, 61, and 85. So for a little while there, you have a rest stop every 10 miles. You might want to plan accordingly uh, and map your stop outs ahead of time. So once again, that's going to be at mile 21, 40, 51, 61, and then 85, and that is it. Uh, it talks about an ice cream pit stop 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and so, yeah, you can check that out as well. So other policies, helmets are required, and then it talks about the typical temperatures out on course. So first thing we're going to do is head over to one of my favorite sites, which is that Best Bike Split, and we're going to talk about some specifics in terms of uh, your effort levels and kind of wind and what you should be expecting out on race day. So now... Heading over to our TSS tracker. This one's TSS at a 293. Again, that might be a little light for just a cycling uh, alone race. If you are a triathlete, then this is probably a good gauge of where you should be for your event. Uh, just keep in mind it is 10 miles longer than that. So <clears throat> this is a great course to practice your variability index. Keep it things smooth and consistent throughout, especially after mile 40. becomes a lot less easier to manage all that Wicked elevation that you will be experiencing, pun intended. Now, as we kind of dig into things, we're going to rock over the, the 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 mileage out on course. And what I want you to watch is this little guy right through here. So as we go through, we start out, we're going to be headed south. Then wind is going to be at our backs. And then we're going to hook up north for a second. And we are going to be headed into the wind. This is going to be pretty much the case up until about mile 20. So those first 20 miles are going to be dead into the wind, at least as typical. Now, as you start to flip around and go further south, then you're going to be greeted with a nice tailwind. And if you are in a big group, this next section should be a dream from mile 20, pretty much all the way to 47. So you have 27 miles of downwind, at least typically downwind current before things switch a little bit there. And as you notice, I'm going to take this speed out of here just to make it a little cleaner, and I'll bring it back later, and I'll tell you why. Because afterwards, all this elevation is going to be dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. 45 miles, 50 miles in, elevation's pretty much over for the ride. It's pretty much just you against you at that point. All right, but our wind is still going to be coming at a, a crosswind on this down, on this bottom section through here. And then when we hook up again, we go, we turn north, and then we are going to be experiencing that headwind yet again. And that is going to be lasting until we start making that, that little turn out there, that left-hand turn. But once we start to bottom out again, we're going to be greeted with a nice tailwind. Beware during this section right here from mile about, let's call it 63, to mile 74, so about 10 miles. It's going to be a fun little stretch. It's a nice quiet area back in there. But once you do turn around, you are going to experience some wind for sure. And it is going to be coming fast at you and you are going to be in a cross headwind or a direct headwind for much of this stretch right through here will make this stretch a little harder than you want it to be so just be careful making our right hand bend again we're still going to have a little bit of a of a tailwind right through here which will be much much appreciated before we hook back up and we follow that road before we get a crosswind from our left and probably a headwind as well now, bringing our speed back in here, and I'm taking the elevation away, we have a lot of speed changes out here, and you can see this average speed right here is 16 miles an hour for this last athlete, and then up here, it's going to be, if I can actually get it, there we go, it's going to be about 23 miles an hour in most cases, and it's going to be bouncing down again. At 17 miles an hour, and then up again, it's going to be at 23 miles an hour. So you can see how big of an impact the wind has on a course like this. If you are on the headwind section and you are in a pack, let the other people drive the pace for you. You'll help your power output. It'll be a lot easier for you. There in those downwind sections, you'll have a lot more effort to kind of play with. If you are in a group environment, this is going to be a great race for you. It's going to be a faster race. If you wanted to see the elevation profile in terms of kind of the more nitty-gritty, this is the same course that we just talked about. So it rolls up, goes down, 
and then we go back for our little hook back up and then we rotate back to the finish if we blow this up here keep in mind for the course of this whole century we have 1100 feet of elevation gain and if you are curious i'm going to highlight the first what is that 30 ish 37 miles or so during this section we have yeah, f during the first 39 miles, we have 750 feet of our 1,100 feet of elevation gain here. So the majority of it is coming in that first little um, section up through here. We curl south and then this big circle right through here. But again, once we get to the top of this circle and we go all the way down here, you're at least typically going to have a headwind. This is a great course to practice your uh, varying pedaling styles. You're going to have a more punchier st style out on this course. If you are in a group mentality, make sure you are taking turns, taking uh, some of the pulls, but don't take all of the pulls, please, 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 because uh, this is a course where you can definitely blow up big time during this flatter section later on, especially around mile 90. That's going to wear. It's going to be where you have a lot of folks dropping off. Because if if you are going to be in a group mentality because of that, make sure you are practicing your nutrition based off of time and not distance. Okay, If you are in a big pack, you are going to be able to fly on this course relatively easily. So, and if that's the case, and if you are fueling by distance, you are going to get thrown off a bit. So fuel by time on this course. Um, either way, and that's going to be a major, major impact here on the Tri-County Classic 100 miler. So have fun out there, be smart, and use the packs to your advantage.